Something metallic is bleeding through space, and it's not from Earth. As the object known as 3i Atlas slices across the solar system at over 130,000 miles per hour, astronomers detected something that instantly shattered expectations. This wasn't just another icy traveler from a distant star. This was a visitor leaking nearly 10 pounds of pure nickel every single second. Not a random blend of cosmic debris, not a mixture of iron and dust, but refined nickel, separated and isolated in a way that nature doesn't normally do. What's even more chilling is what's missing, iron. The cosmic sibling to nickel, forged together in the nuclear hearts of dying stars, was practically absent. The composition was so unnatural, so refined, that scientists began to whisper the unthinkable, that this might not be a comet or an asteroid. It might not even be natural. And then came the signals. Deep within the data, across different observatories and space-based sensors, faint but deliberate pulses began to show up. Patterns that lined up not with natural radio emissions or cosmic background radiation, but with intentional structure. The world of science went from awe to confusion, and from confusion to fear. Because if 3i Atlas isn't a rock, then what is it? When researchers first spotted 3i Atlas from a Chilean survey telescope on July 1st, 2025, it was already moving at blistering speed. At first glance, it seemed like a rare but welcome guest, an interstellar object, only the third ever detected in our solar system. But celebration quickly shifted to concern when spectral analysis from the very large telescope began to return data. The coma surrounding the object, that faint halo of gas and particles, wasn't made of the usual water vapor, ice, or carbon-rich compounds. It was leaking pure nickel. In cosmic terms, nickel is not rare, but pure nickel without iron? That's like finding a gold bar in the middle of a coal mine. It simply doesn't happen naturally. On Earth, separating nickel from iron requires intense industrial processes, smelting, chemical separation, and lots of energy. It's a technology, not a coincidence. The fact that this object was doing it in space, and on a scale never before observed, set off alarms. One Harvard astrophysicist made it blunt. This isn't a rock, it's engineered. And just like that, the narrative surrounding 3i Atlas transformed from scientific curiosity into potential contact. Further studies deepened the mystery. James Webb, with its unmatched infrared precision, peered into the emissions of 3i Atlas and made a stunning discovery. Not only was the object shedding metallic nickel, but it also had the highest carbon dioxide to water ratio ever observed in any comet, eight parts CO, two to one part water. For reference, the comets in our solar system typically hover around 4% CO2. This was an object built of entirely different materials. The composition wasn't just strange, it was incompatible with any known formation process in our solar system. If it came from a distant star, it should have traces of familiar elements, patterns, and balances. But 3i Atlas didn't obey any of those rules. It was unique, alien, and deliberate. It felt more like a payload than a natural body, a capsule carrying materials with a purpose. But the question echoed louder each day. What purpose? If its makeup raised eyebrows, its trajectory sent chills down spines. Interstellar objects don't usually play nice with our planetary alignment. They arrive on unpredictable curves, passing quickly through the system, untouched and unbothered. But 3i Atlas seemed to be doing the opposite. It passed near Venus, then Mars, then Jupiter, all in a single flyby sequence so statistically improbable, scientists calculated the odds at 0.005%. To make matters worse, its orbit wasn't just unusual, it was retrograde. Instead of moving with the flow of planetary orbits, it traveled against the grain, like a car going the wrong way on a one-way street, slowly, as if observing, as if planning, and its perihelion, the point where it would be closest to the sun, occurred behind the sun, shielded from our best instruments. As if someone or something didn't want us to watch during its most active phase. Each of these choices, the flybys, the trajectory, the retrograde motion, would be impossible to explain if this were a natural object. But if it was designed, suddenly everything made sense. As 3i Atlas traveled deeper into the system, signals began to appear. 
not audio messages or visible lights, but metallic signatures embedded in the ratios of its emissions. Some researchers believe this could be a form of communication, not in words or sounds, but in composition. The idea is as old as SETI itself, that any intelligent civilization might embed a message not in sound, but in mathematics and chemistry. Ratios that any scientifically literate species would recognize. One theory proposes that the nickel to carbon ratio, the missing iron, and the extreme CO2 levels are part of an encoded sequence. A metallic Morse code embedded within the object's very structure. Perhaps not a message meant to be read immediately, but a long-term transmission, a signal in physical form, one that would only be noticed by a civilization capable of advanced spectroscopy. In other words, us. The idea that this could be a von Neumann probe, a self-replicating robotic scout, has resurfaced with renewed vigor. Because if the signal is meant to be interpreted, then the object is not a traveler, it's a test. Soon after the trajectory analysis went public, a series of subtle anomalies were reported by observatories tracking nearby asteroids. A cluster of objects in the asteroid belt began to show minute but measurable shifts in their paths. Shifts that couldn't be explained by solar radiation pressure, collisions, or any known gravitational interaction. The only common denominator? Each of these objects had recently passed within several million kilometers of 3I Atlas's trajectory. This hinted at something terrifying, localized gravitational manipulation. In other words, 3I Atlas was affecting the space around it in ways no natural object should. It wasn't just interacting with our system, it was changing it. Scientists at the European Space Agency called it gravitational whispering, a term used to describe gravitational distortions so faint they're almost untraceable, unless you're looking for them. The implications were massive. If 3I Atlas can alter the orbits of other bodies subtly and consistently, it might be mapping the gravitational topology of our solar system. Or worse, probing how easy it would be to destabilize it. James Webb then delivered another piece of the puzzle, and it only made things darker. Using its mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, the telescope measured not only the reflected heat from the sun on 3I Atlas's surface, but also internal emissions from within. The results defied every known law of passive thermodynamics. Instead of cooling as it moved away from the sun, the core of 3I Atlas grew warmer. This pattern made no sense, unless the object was generating heat internally. This was not heat from outgassing, friction, or radioactive decay. It was too steady, too uniform, and too controlled. It behaved like a reactor, not a rock. A stable heat signature pulsing at regular intervals. The emissions formed a wave that repeated every 51.2 minutes, and then suddenly dropped to 17.07 minutes. This shift in rhythm was later found to match precisely with the timing between the object's gravitational whispers. This was no coincidence. This was coordination. Just as things couldn't seem more unearthly, a detection from Earth's own moon changed everything. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, circling the moon for over a decade, picked up a bizarre electromagnetic echo on its dark side, a signal that mirrored the metallic frequency signatures emitted by 3I Atlas. This wasn't just a distant broadcast. It was a reflection, as if something on or beneath the lunar surface was resonating with the same frequency. That meant either the signal from 3I Atlas had reached and activated something on the moon, or that something was already there, waiting to respond. Either way, it introduced an idea so bold it was nearly dismissed, that 3I Atlas is not alone, and that our own moon might be part of its intended route. If the moon was seeded or prepared for contact long ago, then this object might be coming not to discover, but to reconnect. Then, silence. After weeks of increasingly structured emissions, frequency pulses, thermal waves, and gravitational disturbances, it all stopped. The object became quiet. No more pulses, no more nickel loss, no more temperature fluctuations. At first, scientists believed it was a sensor error. But when multiple observatories confirmed the same thing, total emission silence, panic set in. This wasn't a gradual fading. It was a deliberate shutoff. Something had changed. Some even speculated the object had completed a transmission or gone into stealth mode. The timing was too perfect. It happened precisely one hour after the moon's echo was recorded. 
It was as if 3i Atlas had sent a signal, received a reply, and then vanished into strategic dormancy. That's not behavior of an object. That's behavior of an intelligence. As the silence dragged on, researchers turned back to the previous emissions, applying newer AI-powered signal analysis tools to re-examine what had once seemed like ambient noise. What they found shook the radio astronomy community. Buried within the earlier metallic signal streams were high-frequency microbursts, almost imperceptible without enhanced decomposition. But when isolated and mapped, they revealed a recurring modulation pattern, not random, not environmental, but algorithmic. A binary stream embedded inside the chemical ratios. It was as if 3i Atlas had been transmitting digital information using molecular emissions, a form of communication so advanced that only a civilization capable of real-time molecular spectroscopy could decode it. In other words, it was never trying to hide. It was speaking in a language we weren't smart enough to notice. Until now. And the question wasn't just what the message said, but who it was meant for. The shock deepened when a comparative analysis of radio bursts from a completely unrelated object, a deep space fast radio burst cataloged as FRB20201124 a revealed an almost identical modulation structure to the microbursts found in 3i Atlas, except this FRB came from a galaxy 400 million light years away. The implication? Either this is a universal communication protocol, or both events are linked. And if they are linked, then 3i Atlas isn't just a rogue traveler. It's part of something much bigger. A network, a system, or even a fleet. That realization sparked fears among global defense communities. If these objects are communicating across galaxies, using chemical signatures, gravity pulses, and thermal rhythms, then we're not just witnessing an anomaly, we're witnessing an operation. As panic built in private corridors of power, one last event pushed things into total disbelief. During an attempt to recalibrate the web's optical instruments on 3i Atlas, astronomers noted a strange lensing effect around the object, not from its mass, but from a field of interference. It distorted the background stars in a way similar to gravitational lensing, yet the object didn't have the mass to cause it. That led to one inescapable hypothesis. 3i Atlas was surrounded by a form of energy manipulation or cloaking, an active field distorting light around it. This wasn't some drifting relic. This was a camouflaged structure, a machine designed to move undetected, until now. Even worse, the field wasn't constant. It pulsed at intervals that matched the microbursts found earlier, as if the lensing distortion was part of the signal itself, or perhaps a response to being observed. Because when we looked at it, it looked back. Then came the moment no one expected, a coordinated sensor blackout. Over the span of 37 seconds, ground-based observatories in Hawaii, Chile, South Africa, Australia, and even Antarctica reported simultaneous telemetry errors when tracking 3i Atlas. All instruments went dark for the exact same duration. Even satellites in orbit briefly lost line of sight data. It was as if something, or someone, had triggered a global sensor eclipse, temporarily blinding every eye watching the object. But here's the twist. 37 seconds after the blackout ended, a subtle shift in 3i Atlas's trajectory was detected. It had changed course slightly, a deviation of just 0.008 degrees, insignificant for natural movement, but terrifying if intentional. Because if it was intentional, then 3i Atlas didn't just know we were watching, it knew how we were watching. And it used that knowledge to disappear, adjust, and move, not randomly, but with purpose. Just as the global sensor blackout was being brushed off publicly as a cosmic coincidence, an anonymous whistleblower claiming ties to the European Space Agency leaked an internal communication dated only hours after the incident. The document referenced an unauthorized data spike intercepted by military-grade infrared satellites which had momentarily picked up what was described as a thermal bloom with geometric symmetry originating from the object. The geometry, described in the report as a hexagonal radiative pattern, was unnatural. Symmetry at that level doesn't exist in cosmic outgassing. What does? Technology. The bloom lasted 1.3 seconds, just long enough to be recorded before 3i Atlas resumed its silence. This thermal event, 
matched with the prior cloaking distortions, sent an undeniable message to those with clearance. Something is active, and it is hiding in plain sight. Simultaneously, something strange began to occur in Earth's own protective magnetic shell. Magnetometers in low Earth orbit registered a subtle fluctuation in the Van Allen belts, Earth's radiation shield, right as 3I Atlas aligned with our planet's orbital plane. The shift was small, but it was synchronized with the exact moment 3I Atlas passed behind the Sun and reappeared days later. Scientists described it as a magnetospheric hiccup, a phenomenon only previously observed during massive solar storms. But there were no solar storms, no flares, no explanation. Some suspect this wasn't an external coincidence, but an intentional test, as if 3I Atlas was scanning, pinging, or mapping our planet's magnetic field for vulnerabilities. Others suggested something far worse, that it was mimicking our signature, learning to blend in, to become invisible within our own system. On August 8th, seismic sensors in the Indian Ocean detected a deep, ultra-low frequency vibration that didn't originate from tectonic movement or known maritime activity. The signature didn't behave like a natural quake or underwater volcanic activity. It pulsed rhythmically, like a sonar wave, repeating exactly every 12 minutes. What made this terrifying was its directionality. Triangulation revealed it wasn't spreading outward like normal vibrations. It was focused upward, as if targeting satellites or something in orbit. Analysts dubbed it the soundless impact, because while it shook the instruments, it produced no sound waves detectable by hydrophones. It was a vibration with intent, a directed wave possibly interacting with space-based systems. No natural explanation fit the profile. But if 3I Atlas had transmitted a wave through Earth's oceans to reach our orbital ring, it would suggest a level of planning that shatters even our wildest theories. Finally, a commercial CubeSat operated by a private aerospace startup in low Earth orbit began malfunctioning in strange ways. Its internal temperature dropped 40 degrees below operating threshold in minutes. Its gyroscope spun erratically, and worst of all, it started broadcasting a signal it was never programmed to emit. The waveform, once analyzed, matched the microburst signature found earlier in 3I Atlas's emissions. The CubeSat was repeating a signal, not one it recorded, but one it had somehow absorbed, and began echoing back. This meant 3I Atlas had not only reached Earth's orbit with its signal, it had seeded a relay. It had infected or altered a satellite to amplify its message. This wasn't a comet. It was a node, a machine, a messenger, or something far beyond both. And now it had used our own technology to complete its circuit. What began as a strange interstellar rock leaking metallic vapor has unraveled into something far beyond science, something that no observatory, no space agency, no military command was truly prepared to face. 3I Atlas is not just a traveler from another star. It is a system, a transmitter, a mirror held up to our ignorance. Every signal, every emission, every distortion has whispered a message we chose not to hear. You were never alone. Its orbit defied physics. Its structure defied chemistry. Its silence was louder than any explosion in space. And when it began to seed its signal into our satellites, into our oceans, into our very magnetosphere, the fear turned from cosmic wonder to existential dread. Because this isn't the start of a conversation. It's the activation of one. The CubeSat that echoed its signal was not a malfunction. It was a handshake, a test, a trigger, and we passed it. So now we are left with a single staggering truth. 3I Atlas didn't come here to visit. It came here because it had been here before, because it knew where to go, because it knew who we were. And now that its message is in orbit, reverberating across the invisible threads of our planet's magnetic shell, we have to ask ourselves something terrifyingly simple. What happens when the reply arrives? If this video made your spine tingle even half as much as the scientists decoding this mystery, like subscribe and comment below what you think 3i Atlas really is, because whatever it is, it's not done with us yet.